Hey Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. So we're here with Chris Anderson, architect of Avalon. And we're going to talk about tech. Avalon. Avalon. I, I think I've heard that's what yeah. I should talk about. Absolutely. So talk. So what's going on here? Man? What, what, what's Avalon all about? Uh, well, Avalon really is, uh, you can think of it as one of two ways, right? There's, uh -huh. there's basically two kinds of software in the world, software that talks to other software and software that talks to people. And that's okay. it. That's what we got in the world. And so we got Indigo for the software for software thing, and we got Avalon for software for people. So Avalon is about building software for people. Okay. And I like to think about Avalon as doing really two things. It basically figures out what color to make a pixel and it figures out where to put the pixel on the screen. <laughs> Everything else is noise. Oh. But, um, All right. You don't agree? Oh, I agree. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, software for people. Software for people. Okay. Uh, but you know, you're you're saying that you like to, you want us to go a little deep. You want us to go into the nuts and bolts of how we figure out which pixels to put on the screen, right? Yes, absolutely. So the easiest way to start is a little bit of a big block diagram, right? So yeah. let's look at uh, the system. So somewhere you have a uh, well, you have a person, and the person's looking at a monitor. This is a new, new uh, uh, flat panel monitor, so it's thinner. You'll notice that. <laughs> um, the question is, what, how do we figure out what's on top of there? So basically, on top of this, we have basically Direct 3D. And we have our friend, User32. So maybe asking, well, why do you have both Direct 3D and User32? Well, if you think about this in, in the Windows XP days, basically, User32 is responsible for figuring out what window gets what space on the screen. So we need to have user 32 involved so we can have more than one program running. Okay. Direct 3D is what we're going to use to render all the content inside of the window, though. So basically, Direct 3D talks to some driver, which eventually figures out what pixels are on the screen. Yes. So on top of Direct 3D, we have what we call millcore.dll. Hmm. So millcore is the super secret confidential, <laughs> ultimately responsible for setting the pixels. Okay. And basically what Milcore is, sorry, I'm, I'm making you go back and forth. It's fine. It's uh, a good practice one. Milcore is a, it takes a bunch of 2D and 3D text and imaging, and it translates them all into things that direct 3D can understand. Okay. So if you're familiar with 3D programming, it's basically, it does all of our tessellation, it does our texture management, it takes care of all of that stuff for us. And so it produces a simple API on top of which we build what's called Presentation Core. Mm. So again, this is all the nuts and bolts which most people shouldn't have to understand. So Presentation Core is the low-level API in Avalon. It's the thing that we built the framework on top of. Mm -hmm. So if you go in and dig into Presentation Core, it's where you see things like visual and geometry and model 3D and imaging, all those like kind of, you know, the grungy bits about um, directly manipulating the graphics are all in that Presentation Core. Mm -hmm. And it talks to Millcore, which eventually manages the screen. Now, is it, it's important probably to point out that you guys have done some pretty significant innovation in this, in this area. Oh, yes. I mean, we're just saying nuts and bolts, bit twiddling, et cetera, but you've done some really good work. Well, I think, I, I think that the, the way I always like to look at it is I like to think about like what, what's one of the most bizarre things, and the, one of the things I like to think about is our text engine. So we wrote a whole new text engine, a whole new thing that takes you know, true type and open type fonts and rasterizes them and displays them, mm -hmm. but it does it in 3D. It does it with hardware acceleration. Mm -hmm. So it's taking that path-based uh, geometry that is the, the font file and actually converts it to a bunch of triangles for the 3D video card to render. Mm. Um, now, it, it, if we get into some of this, there are points at which it falls back to basically doing textures, but mm -hmm. generally if you scale the font up, we're actually creating a, a bunch of triangles that your video card can then render very, very fast. And so there's uh, tons of deep innovation there. Mm -hmm. um, but so if we go back to the diagram for sure. a second here, Absolutely. this interaction between these two is pretty interesting to talk about because okay. what you end up having is we actually render the animation separate from the main UI thread. So if you think about it, we basically have these two threads that are running. One is the composition thread and one is your UI thread. So if you've seen other presentations on Avalon, basically we always talk about visuals and UI elements and buttons and controls and windows. Mm -hmm. And those are all these happening on the UI thread. Okay. But there's this other thing that's happening that you don't really see. You can kind of think of it as like, think about the garbage collector, right? You never think about the garbage collector thread necessarily, mm -hmm. but it's always running in the background taking care of stuff for you. 
In Avalon, we use the term, you know, the CLR introduced managed memory. Avalon introduces this notion of managed graphics. Mm. And it's this idea that we have this composition engine running behind the scenes for you to take care of refreshing the, the, the display frame, uh, handling animations, doing composition, doing all of these things so that you don't have to be doing them on your main UI thread. Fantastic. So you end up with, go back to here, we end up with this, basically these two pipelines that communicate from the UI thread back to the composition thread. This is all happening under the covers. This is the, you know, these are things that there's actually no real developer exposure of. It's just the inner workings. So we end up with basically a composition tree over on this side and a UI tree over on this side. And one UI element may result in multiple composition nodes or you know, multiple UI elements may end up with a single composition node. So there's, it's not a one-to-one -one mapping. But the real interesting thing is that the protocol between your composition thread and your UI thread mm -hmm. is actually a message-based protocol. You can think of it as kind of like this is indigo for the video card. Oh. Um, so we actually take it and we can take your composition thread and run it on a different machine. Hmm. So suddenly we get, uh, think of terminal server remoting. Yeah. The way TS works today is it takes the low-level GDI commands and remotes them to the other machine mm -hmm. so that you're not remoting all the pixels. But anytime you hit anything uh, really complex, it ends up falling back to bitmaps effectively. So if you think about it, if you run Trident or any direct draw application on a server and then t terminal server into it, it has to send pixels, send bitmaps over, which is really, really slow. Mm. So what we can do with this, we can actually remote over effectively the developer intent. We can remote that composition tree down to the client. And so now you're no longer having to compose all these alpha blended graphics and animations on the server. You can do it on the TS client. So like this, this separation between the composition and the UI thread is really powerful. It lets us do a lot of kind of very advanced things. Fantastic. Um, That's really interesting. So really, let me think. So now we know what, what pixel we're lighting, right? Yes. We figured it out. This guy tells this thing how to figure out the pixel, right? <laughs> Question is, how do we, what does this do to tell this guy how to lay it, right? Mm -hmm. So then we get into, I, I can erase, right? Yes, you can. the video here. Um, so now that we've got that, we build on top of presentation core, presentation framework, presentation framework, which is too big for the box because there's so much innovation. In it. Oh, I bet. So let me blow this up a little bit into a larger picture. Okay. A little animation there. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Smooth. Um, presentation framework is really about seven things. Applications, controls, styling, which allows us access to layout, data, uh, content, and actions. So these kind of seven basic ideas. You have an application that consists of multiple controls. Mm -hmm. the con there's a bunch of special kind of controls. There's like a, a window and a page and a bunch of other stuff that are these kind of high level controls that are the top of your app. Yeah. And then there's sub controls. So you can go in and put buttons inside of windows, et cetera, through composition. So you have controls. Then you go in and you take styling. Styling is basically this ability to declaratively manipulate the properties associated with a control. And it gives designers the ability to kind of inject themselves in the middle of your application and really change the look and feel of it. So we get controls which use styling to get access now, these to. these are human designers. These are human designers. Okay. These are human designers. We're back to people. Because in yeah. the end, it's people talking to people. <laughs> and there's just this computer in the middle. So you, have, you can interact as a developer and designer as a good team. Yeah, exactly. It's the in a natural uh, way. Yeah, so we can get people like Rory to help us design great UI like he does on his website every day. Fantastic. You saw that he leaked the new notepad. No, I did not. Yeah, you, you got to go check out Napoleon.com and see the, the Longhorn notepad that he leaked. It was pretty controversial. Oh, um, interesting. We'll leave it to that. Okay. Um, so with styling, I get access to layout, data, content, and actions. And so, you know, at this point, we're really into kind of the how you build a program. And so the, there are some philosophies in there. For example, you know, all of our controls are lookless. We wanted to have a generic way of building applications that didn't tie you to one look. So if you think about going to something like MSNBC or Disney.com or something like this, mm -hmm. they have very different look and feels to their applications, to their websites. And we want the platform to really embrace that and allow that to happen. 
And to do that, we needed this separation between how a control is positioned, how the data is bound into it, and what the content it displays mm -hmm. is. And so that's really why stylings are added to enable that developer designer interaction. Fantastic. So that's really it. Right. right. There's a lot, there's a lot to it. So we've gone from the human right. looking at the screen. Looking at the screen. We figured out that Direct 3D likes pixels. Milk core gives us an API on top of it. Presentation core talks to Milk Core so that we can figure out which pixels to light. And then we built a framework on top of it so that developers approaching this don't have to think about all that cropped. And they get kind of these seven simple concepts around applications, controls, styling, layout, data, content, and actions. Fantastic. This is great. And draw a circle around that, and that's Avalon. That is marvelous. Avalon. And we didn't mention XAML at all. We didn't mention XAML. Which is great, which is a beautiful point. <laughs> XAML is just a programming model. Exactly. It can target anything. Beautiful. Well, thank you Great. for your time, Chris. Well, thanks for coming by. Great, and we're going to get even more deeper into this in the, in the next few weeks. Yeah, okay. we should sit down with a bunch of people on the team and go through each one of these. This would be fantastic. Great. Thank you. Thanks.